So I'm just on a test drive with this Captiva. It's got fault codes P0013 and P0014 related to the actuator solenoids, exhaust actuator solenoid. So uh, on the test drive, I'm just confirming that the drivability is okay, which I have already and it does seem to be. I haven't noticed any performance issues, nor has the customer said that they're having any difficulties in the drivability of it. So what I'm gonna do with this one now is bring it back to the workshop and visually inspect them solenoids. <laughs> So the first thing I do when I get back to the workshop is I pop the bonnet and I start to make room to gain access to those camshaft position solenoids. I remove this intake rubber boot which connects to the top Ecotech cover. The engine cover sits below that and I am going to be removing all of them components to gain access to it. This is held on by a little pipe at the side and then there is also a clamp at the front that needs to be removed. I pull out that pipe and pull up on two um there's two little rubber boot connectors that they push into on the rear side of the engine and then on the front you have this clamp that needs to be disconnected to pull up now there are a couple of reasons why i want to visually inspect these these solenoids can be tested in position you don't have to remove them but i do want to see if there's any blockages any sludge what condition they're in there is a couple of things of note with these items that you're going to need good condition oil you want to make sure that there's a good service history I know that this vehicle was recently serviced so that's not the issue the oil is good the level is good so a blockage and the condition of these items is something I'm concerned with I have the cover removed now and I can see on the rocker cover that these are marked you can see that the exhaust is on this side and the intake is towards the front of the engine I disconnect the electrical connectors on both sides and then I mark now I mark any of my electrical connectors when I remove this is overkill on this engine because they can't be interchanged the um, exhaust one is black the intake one is uh, a grayish color and they are different um, locating um, slide pins that's in them for both connectors so if you see this purple type one that goes into the black exhaust and the gray goes into the intake now very straightforward in removal they're just held in by two 10, milli 10 millimeter bolts and I'm using my ratchet here to loosen them off when i spin them away out of position uh, i do have a rag nearby because these are going to be soaked in oil so once you have the uh, bolts backed all the way out i do advise having something close by that you can set these solenoids down on um, they are stuck in position in this in this model uh, this is common to happen across a lot of different um, actuator solenoids and what i do in them instances is the same as a lot of different components on engines is i gently try and get it to rock the same as if you were disconnecting a hose you try and break the seal move it away and then once you have it um, in a position that it twists it's going to come out a lot easier if you just try and continuously pull or pry up you can easily do damage i rock um, on the exhaust side now and you can see how easily it starts to move and then it simply pull straight up and leave it down on a clean surface after that I have a quick look at it and there is a lot of dirt that is built up on the exhaust and the intake side. It's not very clear on camera here, but there was quite a lot of sludge build up on both of these on both of these solenoids. But I bring it over to the bench and I start to do my test. This is on the exhaust side. We're on ohms. We're checking the resistance and straight away we can see a fault. That is a kilo ohms reading and that is not anywhere near the values that you would expect. This is the intake side and we get a nice reading on this which is sits in around the 20 ohms that is exactly where we hope to be in the type of range when testing these the other one is completely uh, out of spec and we know we have a fault there but I do still do the power um, test on these items when you connect it to a 12 volt supply which I'm using my jump pack here and then you apply the power onto it you should hear a click I check the intake side first and you can hear a click and then afterwards I check on the exhaust side. 
Because in that last clip the footage of this actual unit being tested wasn't very clear, I decided I would just show you back over again a failed unit on it. Uh, first is the ohms test. So I've got my multimeter already here set up. It's on ohms and we are just going to connect it up and check. And if you see there, it's on the K, which is kilo ohms, which means it's completely out of range and a faulty unit. Now the other test I'm gonna do, which is equally as straightforward, is the battery test. I've already got my battery connected up here with the leads in place. And I'm gonna hook up connector on one side. See there, I've got my connector on one side and I'm gonna just run this to the other pin and you should hear a click with a working solenoid. And we get absolutely nothing and that is because we have a faulty unit. So those simple tests are able to confirm with certainty that you need to replace the um, actuator solenoid. So as you could see in that last test, we have a complete failure. So I go ahead and order the new part. Now the customer just opted in this case to get the one solenoid. And in this one, I show what a new reading is just for comparison. And it sits right at about the 11 ohms straight out of the box mark. Now remember we had a 19 to 20 ohms on the other one and then we had a complete out of sync reading on the exhaust side. I clean up the intake as best as I can because I didn't want to just reinstall that for the customer without making sure that it was in the best possible shape going in. I do lubricate, put a little bit of lubrication on both seals as well. As I pop them down I have the intake now in and this is the brand new exhaust um, solenoid going back in as we speak. It's just straight down and then pop it. These ones come with a new bolt as well and this was a genuine part. There's a few aftermarket options but if you can and there's not much of a price difference always better to go for genuine in my opinion. I then reconnect the electrical connectors and I start to fit back everything I removed. So very straightforward process. We're popping down the engine cover. We're popping back on the top cover and we are tightening up all of the removed clamps. The boot goes back on, the pipe is reconnected. The last thing to do is clear the fall codes that were stored. Now ignore the two other fall codes that were on it. I know the reason for that and it is nothing to do with the problem. I start the engine up and make sure that the code has gone off and that it doesn't flash back straight away like it had in the past and then it is ready for a road test. So I'm just coming off the final road test with this now and the engine light is now cleared. No fault codes are stored. Remember this code was coming back straight away and could not be removed. But with the new part fitted, we have solved all those issues. I really hope you found this video useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.